Okay. Thank you for joining me, Vicky. I appreciate it. Uh, you send a large number of vaccines for Afghanistan. Um, so you're following up on that probably. And do you think it's enough to uh, help Afghan people uh, stop the spread of uh, COVID uh, beyond or the numbers we have? Uh, it's definitely not enough. We need more. Uh, for a population of nearly 30 million, having received a total of less than 5 million vaccines certainly isn't enough to stop the spread of COVID. But we also need to convince the Afghan people to take the vaccines. So that's the next step. So Afghanistan is now uh, threatened with three elements, the conflict, mm -hmm. COVID, and also uh, climate change drought. How IRC is dealing with it? Because there might be a lot of work for you. Yes, it it's very much, it, it is quite a lot of work. Uh, so let's take the drought, for example. You know, we've been working on drought issues since the last major drought and climate smart agriculture. But, you know, studies have shown that for those displaced in the last drought, when neither, which were nearly a quarter of a million people, that on average it would have taken 16 years for them to pay back the debt they accumulated during that crisis. And then, of course, COVID hit. And COVID has devastated the Afghan economy. Uh, the amount of people living in poverty increased from you know, 50, around 50% 50 of the population to over 70% of the population. So people still haven't recovered from the last drought. It's estimated that one third of the population is in emergency or crisis level food insecurity. So then you add to that COVID, uh, and this current wave of COVID is hitting Afghanistan harder than the previous, the previous waves. Um, at the end of June, they were looking at, for those people that were being tested, at over a 40% daily positivity <clears throat> test rate. And then, of course, the conflict has intensified greatly in the last few months. And all of these factors interact. For example, if the roads are blocked because of the COVID, of COVID, then farmers can't get their truckloads of fresh produce to the markets and then they get destroyed because they only last for so long. Or if there are unexploded ordinances that end up in their fields, they can't harvest. So all of these forces are interacting and we are doing our best to respond with our emergency programs, our livelihoods programs, um, and our education programs. Um, so ongoing uh, conflict and fightings in different parts of Afghanistan, how would uh, impact your accessibility uh, to help these people in need in different parts of Afghanistan? As a humanitarian agency, neutrality is one of our four core principles. And so we negotiate with whoever is controlling territory for access to that territory. And to date, uh, most parties to the conflict have agreed that they will attempt to protect humanitarian workers. Now, it's also very difficult to get into areas when there is active fighting. Not only is it difficult to get into those areas, but staff that are from those areas, you know, either want to hibernate or flee often until the fighting has ended. So we're concentrating our response on people who have been fleeing those areas and then in areas that haven't experienced heavy flight fighting. Well, good luck. I hope everything goes well. Um, and uh, Pakistan uh, also decided to follow um, Iran's model of hosting influx of refugees due to the ongoing conflict. Um, how IRC is planning to deal with this uh, refugees and IDPs, they were going to especially uh, Pakistani border. Yes, well, as you know, IRC is also a refugee resettlement agency. So we are, excuse me. <coughs> you can start. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I? <coughs> we have edit. No worries. Excuse me. Okay. So I'll start that the answer to that question again. As you know, IRC is also a refugee resettlement agency for the United States. So we are advocating 
opening up more visas and a quicker processing for those whose lives are at risk and need to to get out. We are also doing a lot of advocating through our Asia displacement platform and other methods with other countries to ensure that they host Afghan refugees. So it might not be Pakistan and Iran this time if they're closing their borders, but perhaps other countries in Central Asia would be willing to to open up to Afghan refugees. But of course, the what we most hope for is that the parties to the conflict can come to some sort of agreement and some sort of ceasefire so people don't feel the need to flee from their home. Yeah. Uh, what's your like future strategy, like which will be most effective to deal with refugee crisis? And also, like it will be a lot of uh, IDPs uh, locally. Um, how, mm -hmm. what, how will you deal with it? Uh, we will keep responding in ways that we have been responding. So the important thing is, is that the humanitarian actors and the development workers actors need to work together. So we can respond to for emergency life saving assistance in the areas to which the IDPs flee, but then there has to be longer term programming for them and what that will look like will depend upon what the conflict look like, looks like in the coming months. Yeah, so um, about women and girls education, you also have some programs for women and girls, especially refugees. Yes. Um, how is it going on and with the conflict, also COVID, how it all impact uh, for these people to uh, get the education they need? Yeah, so both both conflict and COVID does impact the the opening of education classes. And of course, we're working in some of the most difficult areas on education for both girls and boys, um, namely right now, Helmand and Logar and with a partner in Kandahar. So we're continuing to negotiate with those in control of those territories. And to date, we have indications that we will be allowed to open the schools, um, but we will continue to follow that closely. And then also working with other educational partners to look at you know, innovative um, education programming and accelerated learning for those who have to have who have to miss out on education because of security concerns. So also uh, there's a lot of talks of US uh, embassy and uh, the impact of security. What's your fears about? So you're right in the middle of the uh, conflict area. Yeah, so we're committed to staying and delivering. And this is what the humanitarian community has stated and hopefully all partners UN and NGOs will be able to maintain that we do need support from the international community to be able to do that. We need the airports to main to stay open. We also need support from the parties of the conflict to ensure safe passage of our humanitarian workers, whether they're Afghans or whether they're international. As long as we have that, we will commit to stay and deliver and IRC did stay and deliver during the Taliban years and we're committed to staying here no matter what. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Let's